five records, five cassettes, or five compact discs, use your credit card and call 1-800-257-1257. That's 1-800-257-1257. Or send $19.95 for records or cassettes, or $29.95 for compact discs. Plus four fifty postage and handling to a Treasury of Golden Classics, P.O. Box 8250, Atlanta, Georgia. This is CNN. Hello and welcome to CNN Overnight. I'm Dave Michaels at the CNN Center in Atlanta. Senior administration officials say they think Supreme Court nominee Judge Clarence Thomas will get enough Senate votes Tuesday to be confirmed. Law professor Anita Hill, who testified that Thomas sexually harassed her, returned home to Oklahoma Monday. Hill says she told the Senate the truth and that she did not imagine the conduct she described in her testimony. CNN plans to carry the Senate vote scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. Eastern, 2200 Greenwich Mean Time. CNN will also carry portions of the Senate debate leading up to the vote on Judge Clarence Thomas. Coverage begins at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 1400 GMT. The third time was a charm for 29-foot Ares rocket codenamed Red Tigress 2. The rocket successfully blasted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, Monday morning. It carried Star Wars experiments for the Pentagon. The rocket reached an altitude of about 240 miles before falling into the Atlantic Ocean as planned. Two previous launches had been canceled due to technical problems. The U.S. is reportedly helping the Soviet Republic of Russia develop a defense against nuclear attack. According to Britain's independent newspaper, the defense is necessary because nuclear weapons outside Russia are not under firm central control. The paper quotes a Soviet defense official as saying those republics with nuclear weapons intend to keep them. The defense system would be less extensive than the U.S. Star Wars program. Most U.S. assistance would take the form of a transfer of technology. The reported uh, U.S.-Soviet cooperation goes beyond President Bush's suggested global protection against limited strikes. By winning this year's Nobel Peace Prize, Aung San Suu Kyi has already helped to focus attention on her cause, though she may not know it. Many Western governments are calling for Myanmar, a formerly Burma, to release Suu Kyi from house arrest. Nobel officials who announced Monday in Oslo that Suu Kyi won the award say they have had difficulty in trying to notify her. She has lived under house arrest in Myanmar since 1989, even though her political party embarrassed the military government in 1990 elections. She was chosen this year as award winner for her nonviolent efforts to bring democracy to Myanmar. The, uh, while uh, will the Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas become Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas? The debate is next on Crossfire. I'm Dave Michaels. I'll be back with more news at the bottom of the hour. Washington. Crossfire. On the left, Mike Kinsley. On the right, Pat Buchanan. Tonight, countdown to the showdown. In the crossfire, Harriet Woods, president of the National Women's Political Caucus. And in New York, Craig Fuller, chief of staff for then Vice President George Bush. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Fred Barnes sitting in for Pat Buchanan. America was transfixed over the weekend as Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas struggled against charges of sexual harassment brought against him by his former staff member, Anita Hill. The Senate must decide at 6 p.m. Tuesday who told the truth, Thomas or his accuser. Judiciary Committee Chairman Joe Biden said that Thomas deserves the benefit of the doubt. But does he still, with so many questions unanswered? Anita Hill passed a lie detector test yesterday, but President Bush stood by his man just the same. And what about the senators who must make the final decision? Bob Beckel, liberal political analyst, is sitting in for Mike Kinsley, who's in Saudi Arabia. There you go. All right, Bob? Me, uh, Craig, uh, uh, over the weekend, as Fred mentioned, Anita Hill took a, press, uh, took a lie detector test and passed it. The momentum was, was, at least I felt, moving towards Clarence Thomas and then slowed up after the news of that lie detector came out. Why do you think Clarence Thomas decided not to take a lie detector test? 
Well, I don't think a lie detector test has a place in this sort of a situation. I don't think that's the way the senators wanted to decide it. It's certainly not the way the issue ought to be decided. Uh, I don't have no doubt in my mind that, uh, that uh, Ms. Hills has created a reality that she very much believes, but I don't think that's uh, going to be conclusive in this case. Well, Craig, there were so many questions left unanswered. Uh, let's assume Clarence Thomas does get confirmed for the Supreme Court. Won't he be carrying so much political baggage now that it'll hamper his job as an effective associate justice of the Supreme Court? I don't believe his job will be hampered at all. I think most Americans understand that this man has been a victim of a process that is out of control and ought never to be repeated again. I don't think he's going to be hampered at all, and I do think he's going to be confirmed tomorrow. Ms. Woods, uh, let me ask you about the momentum in, in this uh, confirmation process. Your organization, the National Women's Political Caucus, has called for a delay in the vote. Now, that suggests to me that you all don't have the votes. You uh, oppose Clarence Thomas and fear that he will be confirmed tomorrow night. Well, what we fear is that, once again, uh, the, these guys just don't get it. That, once again, they're saying, well, we, we sort of got rid of the women's concerns by giving them a hearing. Never mind that the hearing turned into political grandstanding, hectoring of witnesses, waving of strange theories of motives. Where was the thoughtful fact-finding? The issue still hasn't been resolved. They should not be sending someone to the Supreme Court who not only is being accused of sexual harassment, but now may have lied under oath. Now, wait a minute. There were 100 days. Uh, a confirmation process for 100 days, then three days on national television into the evening, ended at 2 a.m. this morning, and you're saying that's not enough? Uh, I mean, that seems like plenty to me. There was so much asked of these people. Uh, what more do you want? Typical male attitude. Now, there should have been a woman there who, early on, and I agree, the process stunk. There should have been someone there, and if there had been women in that committee, say, wait a minute, this is serious, let's do a proper investigation, some of this may need to be an executive seventh session, etc., out there. But the attitude that we gave enough days or time is exactly the kind of stall that the administration was trying to do. Let's just sort of muddy the waters enough and then say, give them the benefit of the doubt, never mind the well, questions. I, I can't, wait, 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 go ahead, Craig. I, I can't believe that anybody in America wants this process to go on one hour, one day longer. Enough is enough. This process was conducted initially by the FBI and frankly considered by the members of the Senate and their staff. That's where it should have ended. There is not one new bit of information about Clarence Thomas that we know now that those senators didn't know before. They never asked a hard Craig, question. Craig, Craig, the fact of the matter is that the Senate of the United States, that the, the Judiciary Committee, all made up of white males, made a decision that this was not a legitimate charge, apparently, or it didn't really matter. And then it took a leak, which I regret, I, and I hope they find the person who did it, but nonetheless, it did touch off a firestorm in America. It did touch a very raw nerve among women in America. So to sort of dismiss this as saying the Senate knew what they had in front of them, yeah, they knew what they did, and they didn't act on it, and they did a very poor job. Uh, they should have uh, acted on it. I am not, I'm not dismissing it, and I want to say right now that I do think if there's any good that comes out of this, it is that the sensitivity across America has been increased. But the concern about sexual harassment, discrimination, is a concern that runs through this administration from George Bush oh, to Clarence on. Thomas. You and I don't kidding. think, I do not think that this process is necessarily going to improve that uh, or change that one, one bit. Well, this is a bunch of bleeding hearts I hear now about sexual harassment when there are many charges which they would not let us bring before the committee that that agency itself had had a pattern of unresolved and unattended sexual harassment cases. More than that, there is this now smokescreen that it's the process that's bad. Uh, Clarence Thomas, the new Clarence Thomas, who had been so uh, clean slate at the original hearings, came before the committee and said, I am being lynched by the process, knowing that everyone hated the process, and now that was the issue, and saying, and I'm, and I'm also victim of racism, and I'm not going to answer any personal questions in which case he buffaloed him and he didn't answer well, wait a minute though here's what here's something i i think you're going to have a hard time explaining maybe you do have some uh glib explanation for it but oh, every glib. poll i have seen shows that uh, polls last night shows that the american people by a two to one margin believed clarence thomas women by almost as big a margin as men believe clarence thomas and not anita hill how come i would say that they are as much victims of this manipulation as the rest of us were by that hearing. And what I mean by that, I bet the average viewer out there thinks that the president nominated Clarence Thomas, said he's the best person for the job, went back in, slammed the door, and said, and now the Senate will take care of this. 
actually there were huge hordes of White House troops that decided how he was going to be uh, approached, who would be, how he would approach the nomination, how he would appear, what he would sound like, who would, what people would be bussed up, what PR teams. We know, we know all that, but what about this hearing? This so hearing, I'm saying, this hearing over the weekend was run by Joe Biden, a Democrat. The majority on that committee were Democrats, I, men who oppose Clarence Thomas. I think they were they were buffaloed and so concerned that that they were going to appear unfair. They fell over on their fannies. I will be very honest. Can I take I mean, I cannot imagine an individual who went through more, frankly, individuals who went through more than the two people who are the, who are the victims of this process. Well, and I can't imagine that exposing them further or going into this further is going to, is going to accomplish but, anything. But Craig, for that very reason, I don't think anybody will deny that Clarence Thomas is a very, very angry man on this eve of what may be a confirmation for him tomorrow. If he does get confirmed, don't you think that the liberals have a legitimate fear that because he's so angry, he's not going to treat them fairly, that this guy will never let this stigma leave him, and he'll carry that anger on into the court and take it out on some very important issues? You know, Bob, I, I know Clarence Thomas. I worked with him during the Reagan administration. He is a fair man, a decent man. I, I think this anger is properly directed at a process that went out of control. I don't think it's going to be carried over in a way that's going to affect the judgments he'll make as a could member someone, of the Supreme uh, could Court. Could someone please remember the, let's say, alleged victim? This is one of the things that is so shocking and dismaying to women. We thought finally we had gotten these guys' attention, and yet up to the very last days we were hearing people saying, well, how come she didn't report it for 10 years? You know, I mean, the very nature of sexual harassment, women sometimes carry this kind of thing for a lifetime. They were just not going to really give it serious attention. And now we have a possibility that women all over the country, we know 30% or more of them are sexually harassed on the job, are going to say, if that's what you have to go through, when you've taken a lie detector test, when you have corroborative witnesses that long before he ever was nominated say, she did tell me she was being harassed by her boss, Clarence Thomas, even with that, the burden is she should be pilloried, she should be fantasized, mentally ill. I think this is disgusting. Well, wait a minute. How can you say that she wasn't taken seriously when her charges were put on national television day and night for three days? What more do you wait want? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Her charges, what we had was, I think, a day-long filibuster uh, with the Republicans saying, making long speeches saying, you are being so victimized. You are such a martyr, Clarence Thomas. He said, yes, I am. Yes, I am. That went on all day long. And the Democrats were saying, who were all freelancing, some of them are trying to find out the truth. The others are saying, How, what am I doing here? I mean, all they did was say, uh, well, uh, did you do it or not? You know, I mean, there were no, he wasn't cross-examined. I think, you know, I okay, think... Okay, Craig, we... Craig we'll, get, we'll get back to you when we come back, all right? And when we do come back, we're going to talk about what the political cost of voting for Clarence Thomas is or what it will be if you vote against him. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town, along with Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, Rudolph, full power! Now you can light up the holiday season for your children again and again with three of the best-loved original Christmas classics ever, all from Time Life Video. From Frosty, to Rudolph, to Santa himself. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. All the, the magical year. characters you loved as a child back again to make Christmas even more memorable for your kids or grandchildren. A child's video Christmas. Three legendary movies selected by Time Life as the best in children's holiday entertainment. And all for $39.99. It's almost Christmas. So call now for all the warmth, wonder, and great music, too. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you go down in Here's how to order your child's video Christmas now. Merry Christmas! To order your child's video Christmas, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-221-4700. That's 1-800-221-4700. Or send $39.99 plus $4.50 shipping and handling to Child's Video Christmas, P.O. Box 1880, Department 2, Alexandria, Virginia, 22313. It took 70 years to build an empire and just three days to bring it down. Hear incredible stories of change in the new USSR on a CNN Sunday night special this Sunday, 9 Eastern.
Welcome back to Crossfire. After an amazing week of testimony by Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill, and supporters and opponents of both, the Senate is set to cast its final vote on Thomas's nomination to the Supreme Court. Here to discuss that vote and its impact are Harriet Woods, president of the National Women's Political Caucus, and herself, a former U.S. Senate candidate, and Craig Fuller, who was chief of staff to then Vice President George Bush, and who got to know Clarence Thomas during that time. Craig, uh, you're a good uh, observer of politics. I've always admired your political analysis. So as you're sitting here tonight, as dispassionately as you can, what do you think is going to go through these, what now looks like 13 or 14 undecided votes that will decide Clarence Thomas's fate? What's the politics behind the decision here for these senators tonight? Well, they're obviously weighing what the consequences are going to be for them in the election next year one way or another. I think at the end of the day, uh, these hearings probably won't have that much of an effect. By that I mean, I don't think the issue has been resolved. I think the people who were definitely against Clarence Thomas before remain there. Those that are strongly for him are going to support him. I think he's got it by about two votes. Uh, we'll, I know we're going to see tomorrow. I do expect that organizations like Ms. Wood's organization, I don't know, 70, 80,000 members are strong, I think, will come out against these, the people that vote for Clarence but they probably were going to do that anyway. Well, Craig, let me, let me follow up on that with you. Now, polls are showing that a majority of Americans tonight would vote for confirmation of Clarence Thomas. However, there's also, I think, even a, even minimum numbers, somewhere between 25 and 40 million working women who believe that during the course of, of their lifetime in the workplace they have been sexually harassed. Uh, that clearly showed itself uh, during the last week. So when they make this decision, isn't it really a question of, how important is it to follow the, the sort of the popular will that Clarence Thomas ought to get in versus what it clearly going to be a lot of anger among women if this guy gets through and gets on the Supreme Court? Look, I, I think every one of us involved in the political process has to acknowledge that we take the issue very, very seriously, sexual harassment, any form of discrimination in the workplace. I believe you'll see elected officials doing that one after another from now until Election Day, but I don't think it's going to change the way the vote comes out tomorrow night on Clarence Thomas. Ms. Woods, let me ask you, you know, I get tired of hearing that it's somehow all women are mad at Clarence Thomas. The polls uh, certainly don't show yeah. that. What sort of retaliation might uh, be taken against senators who vote in favor of Clarence Thomas? Well, I think it obviously depends whether we can recruit some candidates who are viable and qualified, but it also depends whether this issue is actually raised and made vivid for the women. I think very seriously, this is the first time, I think since the beginning of ERA that I've seen a massive cross-section of women, not just all of those who are junkies, who have said, I understand now why we need women in office. You know, it really touches something dear to me and I'm just an ordinary working person or a woman at home. Whether that then hits the ballot box will depend on the, the candidate w and whether we can get them uh, to maintain it. Let me ask you something. Uh, sure. uh, Craig Fuller said he believes the White House has 52 votes for Clarence Thomas. How many votes do you think are set against him? How many perhaps leaning against him? Well, let me just say one thing. They said that last Tuesday morning before the vote. I think they said 54 well, then. 54. But, right. Okay. We think there are still enough undecided, you know, good guys. I don't care whether it's Dodd or Graham or other fellows who have never indicated where they vote. Others who we've been putting a lot of hometown pressure. We're an outside the Beltway organization that we think they are counting. Um, you know, I'm running next time. Uh, is this really worth it? Well, how many firm votes do you have? Uh, I'm, well, I don't know. I'm not going to give you my count. Okay. Bob, uh, Bob yeah. could I come back to you sure. with one point? Sure, go ahead, Craig. Go on in. You know, you asked a political question. One year from now, we're going to be just a few uh, weeks away from a national election. I think what women are going to care about is it has to do with the economy, has to do with child care, health care, education for their children. Those are the kinds of issues that are going to be discussed. I don't think this one's going to be that uh, important. At that I would time. not underestimate this sexual harassment issue, uh, Craig, but I'm going to ask, to speak about yeah. uh, maybe, no, let me play the uh, devil's advocate sure. here for Harry with you for a second. If Clarence Thomas goes down, the right, uh, it, Barnes and his crowd are going to be outraged, and what we're going to end up with is a much more conservative nominee, perhaps, than Clarence Thomas. That's one argument they would say about putting mm -hmm. Thomas on the bench. Point two is, going through all this that he's gone through, that he probably would be much more sensitive to women's issues when they come before the court because everybody's going to be watching him. What do you say to those arguments? I think this is pretty painful for all of us. We would prefer that the president would have come forward with someone 
whose view, who is willing to talk out. Remember, this is the guy who said, I never discussed the Roe v. Wade issue in my life, even though he said it was one of the two most important issues. This is a guy who has not been honest about his beliefs. So it's not just put it on but, women. It's a question of whether he will be fair to us if he wasn't in the hearing. But, Harry, we are never going to get somebody who's going to vote in favor of Roe v. Wade out of that's George not, Bush. No, and that's not the issue. If he had said, I am... Here's my personal views on abortion, but here is how I will approach that issue. I would respect him. The, uh, Craig Fuller, Craig, uh, I was somewhat disappointed in the way President Bush stood behind Clarence Thomas. He, uh, in the beginning, he uh, wouldn't agree with uh, Marlon Fitzwater's characterization that Thomas had been smeared. He wouldn't uh, attack the testimony of Anita Hill. All he would say was, I'm for Clarence Thomas and nothing more. Why wasn't he more uh, noisy and strong in his support? It might have made a difference. Well, I'm not sure you'd want the president uh, rushing out on television to engage in this sort of, uh, uh, of uh, theatrics that's occurred in the last 72 hours or so. Over the course of the last week since these charges uh, were leveled, he's been out, he's publicly supported him. I don't think there's any question in the Senate. I don't really think there's any question across the country as to where President Bush is. I really don't think he should have participated in a way that would have only hyped this story still further, if that's possible. Craig, Craig, wait a minute. Just one thing struck me about George Bush today being somewhat disingenuous. Here's a guy who stood at Kenny Bunkford and said, I'm not picking Clarence Thomas because he's a black. But then today he gets off his helicopter from uh, Camp David and says, and I want to make one point. 69% of Afro-Americans or blacks are in favor of uh, Clarence Thomas. What are we kidding? He took a back seat to this one to see how it was going to pan out. It's panned out. Looks like not bad for him tonight. He's back out front. Well, first of all, I think he made a very solid choice in Clarence Thomas. And secondly, I think he is pleased, I'm pleased, a lot of others are pleased that the American people are backing him tonight. Well, I think he, the president started out in this whole pattern of deception and misrepresentation by standing in front of the people and saying, this 43-year-old man uh, who had had very minimal uh, judicial experience was the best qualified person to go on the Supreme Court. And from then on, everyone said, you might as well do anything you want and say anything you want and play any games, political games you want because this is a political appointment and I think that's a disgrace and I think we better start having nominees and a, a, an advice and consent process that will be fair to all the American people. Well, I'd, I'd like, like some, to just speak out and... We're going to have to take a break here, Craig. Okay. We'll let you talk uh, when we come back. And when we come back, we'll examine whether only women can understand sexual harassment or maybe whether men can too. For one-stop home shopping, look the carpets of Dalton under the big sign when you're looking for our low prices, best selection, and great service. And you don't have to look any further than I did to find a million-dollar inventory of vinyl pouring in just about any pattern or color you could want. Ceramic tile for the wall and for your floor, plus a beautiful selection of marble. After 20 years in the business, Carpets of Dalton is still growing to meet your home furnishing needs. Carpets of Dalton, under the big sign, exit 135 in Dalton, Georgia. You were just lucky today. Hey, I've been working on it. You know how I hate to lose. You know what else? I hate losing my hair. Me too. That's why I did something about it. I called up John. They sent me a brochure. I went to see my doctor. It was definitely a smart move. Hmm. Now I feel great. I think I still have it. Up John even sent me 10 bucks after I saw my doctor. Here it is. Only your doctor has hair loss treatment programs proven to work. To receive your $10 certificate, names of doctors in your area who can recommend what's best for you, and a free brochure describing your options, call 1-800-688-0628. Not bad. Maybe I'll call them. What do you mean, maybe? Come on, there's the number. Go do it. All right, all right. I'll call. For your $10 certificate, simply call toll-free 1-800-688-0628. Because the sooner you act, the sooner you can see results. So call right now. Shaw, Arnett, Blitzer, Scherzer, Holloman, Jacob, Beerbaum, Almanpour, Blystone, Beglite, Mo, Mintier, Blackburn, Randall, Lowry, Garslaw. In times of war and peace, no one covers the big story like CNN. Harriet Woods, I get irritated when I hear this suggestion that only women can understand sexual harassment. I have a wife, I have three daughters, I know the kind of sexual threats and hassles uh, they face out in the world. I think Joe Biden and a lot of those senators do too. You know something? I think you're right. Does that shock you? No. Well, a little bit. I think unless we come out of this 
with uh, respect for both men and women as being equally important to understand what sexual harassment is and learn the signals of one another. And, and we're not talking about flirting. We're talking about legal sexual harassment in the workplace, which is when you are intimidating and threat creating a threatening environment. So it's not something where everyone says, oh gosh, I'll never be able to touch a woman again in the workplace. It is, it is important to say, yes, some of those guys really were, and they really did try to help. But I, I don't take back that I thought that the hearings did not get to the findings that they were a bunch of garbage. Okay, Craig, uh, for, uh, let me ask you, Clarence Thomas raised the issue of racism uh, when the hearings were reopened on these charges against him. Uh, he used the word uh, lynching, which uh, clearly is a, a very explosive word in the, in the black community. Uh, there are some cynics, uh, and I may include myself among those, who believe that this was a planned uh, effort on the part of the White House and his managers to, to bring up the racial division, which now is clearly, by the way, I think, evident across black America over this issue, and a divided and really to sort of scare Democrats away from voting against Thomas because of the furor in the black community. Fair or unfair? Well, I think the charge is unfair that the White House did this, and I think that Clarence Thomas reacted as humanly and as passionately as any individual I've seen in a statement that he indicated only his wife and Senator Danforth had seen. That's when, that, that's when those comments were first made. So I don't think this is some kind of an orchestrated campaign. I think this is a man's reactions who has uh, lived with a great deal of difficulty in his life, but nothing like this. Well, prepared. I'll tell you, the reaction of a lot of the black groups is that for him to invoke this after he has said, I am never going to be using my blackness as a, a special factor, and may I say finally, if women had been on that committee, maybe we would have had witnesses to educate people about sexual harassment, and we would be advancing something out of this. Okay, I would only there. add that I think, I think maybe some black leaders are making that point. I okay. think a lot of black Americans understand Clarence Thomas's point of view. Hi, right, Craig Fuller in New York. Thank you very much. You get the last word. Harriet Woods, President of the National Women's Political Caucus. Thank you very much. In a moment, uh, Brother uh, Fred Barnes and I will be back to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. never heard anything like it. Did you hear it? It's the video that speaks for itself. This ain't a tennis match! In a language that's all its own. Now you can find out what everyone is talking about in this fascinating video, The Hidden NFL. It's free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. The best way to capture all the drama and emotion of sports every week. This is the NFL, which stands for not for long. When you hidden mics it. and hidden cameras let you in on the NFL secrets in this fascinating video that you'll watch again and again. With your free video, keep your eyes and ears open, and you may find out something you didn't know. Duda, we're running a Duda. Do we get a replay on it? Duda, we're running a Duda. In the hidden NFL, you have to know the language. Green 80, 45 blast. And be able to understand the signals. Under swine nine. Call this toll-free number now. Hurry it up, hurry it up, hurry it up, hurry. You better hurry. And be right out there with it. Get off the field! You'll be in the huddle. One, two, one, two, right down. Across the line. And at the bottom of the pile. You'll know what it feels like. Yeah! What it sounds like. If he doesn't go feet first, we're going to hit him. To be inside the revealing world of the hidden NFL. Get your free video and a full year of Sports Illustrated 54 issues, including the famous swimsuit issue, for only $1.29 an issue. Save over 55% off the cover price. And of course, you may use your credit card. The free video and a year of SI make great gifts for the sports fans on your Christmas list. If football is one of their favorites, this is the gift for them. Call now to subscribe or renew or give SI as a gift. The Hidden NFL is free. For quicker delivery, use your credit card. <laughs> Call now for your free video and to enjoy all the excitement of sports every week with Sports Illustrated. Fred, you know, I think that uh, Clarence Thomas probably will be confirmed by one or two votes tomorrow. But the process has stunk. This whole episode has been terrible. One thing I hope happens is whoever leaked this thing ought to be found and they ought to be prosecuted, and let's get this thing back on track. Well, tell that to Joe Biden and those people because it's up to them to call in the FBI. Here's why I think Clarence Thomas really is going to get confirmed. The polls show that he's popular around the country. Most people believe him. 
the Senate really doesn't want to go against somebody that the public says, uh, confirm. For the good news, though, is that these guys are going to have to make a tough vote, which was an easy vote before. From the left, I'm Bob Beckel. Good night for Crossfire. From the right, I'm Fred Barnes. Join us again next time for another edition of Crossfire.